Yeah. Good day, Trooper Cody and Steve. This is one of those videos where people are going to say, "That is such a placid horse. That is such an old horse." I got no idea. He's not placid, and he's not old. He's sensible. It is going to be 35 degrees today, and he just wants to stand and hang his head. But if you saw him in the afternoon when he's out there bucking and carrying on, then you'd think it was a different horse. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do another one of our videos that's hopefully about something you've never heard of. And it's about two particular battles that the light horse were involved in. And one of them took place in October of 1914. And so when I give you that date, you might think, hang on, was Australia overseas in October 1914? And then you're right, because they were still undergoing training, and the battle I'm going to tell you about, the first one, is the Battle of Burke Street. And that battle of the Australian troops took place in Burke Street, Melbourne. And what happened is, each state of Australia had set up a camp, Morfittville Racecourse in South Australia was where the first contingent of South Australian troops were in training. And in Victoria, it was at the suburb of Broadmeadows, later to become famous for the Ford uh, Australia manufacturing plant. But, in, but, but, but then it was 10 miles from the centre of Melbourne, out in the school sticks a bit and was the perfect place to set up a training camp. How perfect was it? Well there was 10,000 Victorians were there at that camp training, training, training to go off and fight the war. They were super keen to be out there and they were getting more and more upset because everybody knew the war was going to be over by Christmas, December 1914. It was all going to be over and the Aussies weren't going to get there in time. So they were super trained, super fit, super keen, and super bored. Bored out of their head. So the rules were that lights out at 9.30 p.m. Everyone in your tent, in your bed, lights out, 9.30. Well, 10,000 men with not many officers no women and access to alcohol is not a good recipe for discipline. They say, they say that women are God's police and that women have a tendency to be, make men on better behaviour than when they're men only. So what started happening was the blokes started drinking and they started going en masse into Melbourne, partying, misbehaving, drinking alcohol, and were recorded as not coming back, forget 9.30 p.m., they weren't coming back till 2 or 3 in the morning. So what actually happened, because discipline was sipping, a 16-year-old girl who is described as being attractive and full-figured, that's how she's described in the newspapers. 16, attractive and full-figured. Her name is recorded as Hetty Bellingham. So, you've got to wonder about history and what history records, and 16-year-old Hetty went to the Broadmeadows camp and she met some soldiers and she went into a tent with them and she agrees she did all this and she sat down in the tent with these soldiers to have a cup of tea. She claims that having started to drink the tea she has forgotten everything then that happened afterwards. We'll never know what the truth is but the the soldier's version is that Hetty was there more than willingly and that Hetty had relations with about 12 soldiers willingly. 
The trouble is, of course, that that became public knowledge, and then Hetty said she only went to have a cup of tea, and that 30 or more soldiers forced themselves upon her. When she said that, it was reported in the newspaper, and in Melbourne there was a newspaper called The Truth, and as we know about the media, the last thing they're interested in is the truth. Never let the truth stand in the way of a good story. You only need to see a reporter on a television camera showing how bad a flood is and then seeing that that reporter is actually down on their knees or something in the water, not actually standing in the water. So what happened is the truth put out a massive headline that blanketed soldiers as being r drunken rapists and because of that all of those 10,000 soldiers in that camp felt slighted, slurred, they believed they'd all been branded and so many of them set off to Melbourne with the specific intention of ripping down every single newspaper banner and poster that was up about the event and getting their hands on every single copy of the newspaper and destroying it. So significant numbers estimated the initial group, the initial party is estimated at 200, went there with a specific purpose and carried this out. They, not severely, but they accosted newspaper boys so that they could take their newspaper, bundles of newspapers and rip them up and throw them in the street. What happened when the, they did this is that they then found thousands of members of the public turned up. This is Burke Street. This is the main, one of the main streets, one of the main streets in Melbourne. Thousands of the public came up and they started encouraging these 200 soldiers and then more soldiers started turning up and before you know it you had a full-blown riot in the middle of Melbourne of 20, what's estimated by the Argus newspaper as 20,000 rioters and the police records of the day show that initially 12 foot police attended in an attempt to quell this riot. 12. So you can imagine that very quickly those 12 officers were overcome and retreated. More soldiers started to arrive. Some were there to try and stop it and to try and get the blokes to go back. But it just got worse and worse because somebody had the bright idea that they should shouldn't just leave it at destroying the newspapers, they should go to Latrobe Street, not far away, and they should physically destroy the officers of the Truth newspaper. By the time this happened, they had managed to round up 200 police officers, many if approximately half were mounted officers, and these officers began to, only had batons, they didn't have sabres, they had batons, and these officers began to try and break up the riot with their batons. But once it was discovered that the, off the soldiers were going to uh, destroy the truth's office, what then happened is all the mounted police took off at speed and raced to the, to the mouth of Latrobe Street. And they physically used their horses as battering rams So the police were charged on their horses to Latrobe Street, formed a barricade, and then when the soldiers tried to get down Latrobe Street to the Truth's officers, they physically used their horses, and it's described that the men were bowled over by the horses, and that the police officers just kept riding back and forth, back and forth, and they did that until the public, really about between midnight and two, the public started to drift away, wanted to get home to bed. 
Once that happened, it appears that the soldiers who were saying, behave yourself, stop this madness, managed to convince the people and the soldiers that were there, and the, the riot broke up. Now, what I had intended to do is to tell you about a second little known battle that the uh, Australians were involved in. But, but, as you can see, I've told you it's 35 degrees. There's no special effects or bullshit, if you like, with these videos. And Cody is getting a bit sick of the heat and the flies. So I'm going to leave it just at the Battle of Burke Street. And the other one I was going to tell you about can be a separate video. So you hang in there and come back to watch the second one. It's even more unbelievable than that one is. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And please, it's a bit of an unusual one, so share it around with your mates. Cheers. Thank you.